Good afternoon, Quilt Roadies. Thank you for stopping by. If this is your first time visiting with us, this is a channel about quilting and stitching and all the things that life encompasses in the Quilt Roadie household. I would appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button if you decide to hang around. And if you are a frequent visitor and are not sure, just be sure that you're subscribed and hit the thumbs up. I had a conversation with a girlfriend about the thumbs up and the subscribe and all of that. And what that does for a channel on YouTube is it promotes your algorithm. It kind of reinforces it. And with that comes a few benefits from the YouTube company. So, any way you can help, I would very much appreciate it. Uh, today is not going to be a big, long video. You can tell it's a work day uh, video. I spent the morning in... Oh, what can I say? This morning was spent at the DMV. And I am telling you, it was a cluster. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I mean, you have to laugh. You just have to laugh. I mean, it doesn't pay to get fused about anything anymore. I mean, you want to. I totally get you want to. And you want to lay down on the floor and kick and scream. But there's a sign in there that says, if you don't behave, they're just going to kick your butt right out the door. And um, and they don't look like they were having a good time. So I spent an hour and a half standing in line this morning. And... Well, the good part about it is if I have to spend that long anywhere, I'm going to try to have a good time. And uh, so I had conversations with people around me that were just so interesting. It, people watching was, because I'm not kidding you, there was probably easily 60 people in line. Yeah. And I asked this one gal that was sitting there, I told her she should have had a name badge and actually worked for them because she was so helpful and, a, uh, and could have been a greeter, but she was just waiting for her son. And um, I said, well, maybe I should make an appointment. Seemed like the appointment people had a different line. And she said the appointment was two to three months out, so if I could wait, that was an option. Well, I didn't want to. I was already there. And apparently um, one of the offices no longer existed in a neighboring town, so hence this one was extra busy. But um, the system was just fascinating, <laughs> let me tell you. It was just fascinating. And um, yeah, I, I would vacillate in my brain going from wanting to scream. Yes, I am human. I wanted to scream. And just laughing at the situation. Because the processes of the world. <laughs> it's the processes of the world. And, and so I finally got up to, uh, after, you know, they call your number. And when they call your number, you get to move to a different line. Yeah. So they call the groups a number in groups of five, and then you move to a different line on the red carpet. But it is not like what we think of the red carpet. I, I told the woman in front of me, I said, well, maybe we're not dressed appropriately. And then all of we stood on the red carpet for 30 minutes. And then she said, well, I don't know what happened to everybody. And I said, it's break time. I actually, it was a crack up because I actually had a similar experience in Croatia 
I was standing in line at the train station trying to figure out how to get out of Croatia and get back to France. And I was watching the system and it I could tell that if you stood in this line, that person was not there consistently and suddenly the door would just drop and you so I told this woman in front of me, I said, don't go stand in that line because that line seems destined to be never ending. And I asked her, I said, when do you want to get out of Croatia? And she said, um, tomorrow. And I said, well, then you better just stand here <laughs> because <laughs> it just, it, it was, it was a cluster. What can I say? I was so happy to to get out of there. Yeah, I was so happy. So I told G, I said, I need to go get a coffee somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I need to get a coffee. Yeah, so my morning, that's why I'm, I'm not all done up. Not that I ever am. But uh, that was my morning, and it was kind of exhausting. Um, yeah, so on to um, some quilting talk. I am still organizing myself and getting ready for retreat. That will be next week. Um, and I'm so happy to have Easter with the family. They're all coming over for lunch, which will be very nice. But I wanted to go through... I did get a question about how I was making... Um, my needle books that I posted. I think I posted it on Instagram. Yeah. And I had the sheep um, up here. And um, I I think I did say I was going to make them into needle books. <laughs> I, please, please be patient with me. I was in line for an hour and a half this morning. And then when I got up to the window, I must have gotten the guy who was like, maybe he wanted to retire two years ago when he couldn't. And he was just so cranky. And, yeah, I felt bad for him. I felt bad for him. So, needle books out of the sheep. And um, a couple of people made a comment where they wanted to have a tutorial. I can't ask Greg to, to take time out of his crafting to film my crafting anymore. We are both knee or chin deep into our passions. And so what I did do was I created a needle book and then the various steps and I'm going to talk you through that so that um, you too can make one without having to watch the tedious parts of me making one. So let me just start with that, okay? So I took the little sheep, aren't they cute? And this was a primitive gathering. Um, Lisa, when she did uh, used to, I don't know if she still does this, but when she used to do a summer block of the month, um, or block of the week, <laughs> yeah, it used to come with the little freebie pattern, and the sheep were a freebie pattern at that time. But um, I had them still, I had like most of them made up, um, and they were just tucked in a box. They were tucked in the box. And I decided that I was going to make needle books out of them because they make fabulous, fabulous gifts. So how did I decide to do this? This is the way um, my brain works, is that I, I don't use a pattern. I just stumble through it until I like it the way it is. And... So here is a finished needle book. I decided not to put a snap or a ribbon or a tie because it pretty much 
the flannel that I used pretty much is um, heavy enough that it stays closed. And then when you open it, I sewed a little heart shape. This is felt that I used inside here. A little heart shaped pocket for these tiny scissors. And then you have um, other pages to put needles on. Yeah. So that is a finished one. How did I create this? This can be any size you want. Um, you can do an embroidery patch. You can make it smaller or larger. But because I had this size square from a previous project, this is the size. But I'm not going to give you the dimensions because you can literally make it any size you want. So the way I did this, let me get some of these um, out here and I shall show you. Okay. I bought felt that kind of complemented the flannel. I went to Pioneer Quilts and I bought a stack of fat quarter flannel and I believe by the feel of this that this might be Bonnie Selva Sullivan's or Kathy Schmidt's flannel because it is just so yummy. And I laid my square. So I laid my square on the flannel and I decided that I wanted uh, the size of the book based on this square. And I knew that I was going to be sewing a quarter inch seam so I, I cut it about a half an inch bigger than the square. And then I doubled the size. So here's Here's the front. Now, because I'm going to, and as you can see, I buttonhole stitched with my sewing machine my sheet block onto my flannel, I put SF101 on the back of this piece only. So that's what I did. This piece of the other side, the inside, I did not because it would be too hard to turn. It'd make everything too thick. So only SF101 on the piece of flannel or cotton, whatever you decide to use, that my piece was going to be stitched on. I remember telling you that I save all the little scraps from all the projects that I ever made where I use SF-101, and that's a Pellon product. And I put it on the back of embroidery and on wool and uh, as a stabilizer, not as a, um, uh, like, soft fuse, not like soft fuse. This is just as a stabilizer. It's an interfacing. I save all the chunks because you don't need, when something's going to be turned inside out, you don't have to have the exact size. So you can see on the back of this, there was two pieces that I put together. So I'm using up every single scrap I have because all of the products um, are so expensive now. I mean, I bought some extra fat quarters for a quilt that I'm going to be cutting out. It was $14 a yard, so I'm not wasting anything, uh, if you know what I mean. I'm not wasting anything. So on the back, again, on the back of the piece that I have to buttonhole whatever design, whether it be embroidery or wool, I am putting SF-101. And then the other piece I am not. And then I cut out two pieces of felt of a complementary color to be the pages inside. And I'm making that, see how I picked the green? And I'm making it just a little bit smaller than the piece because when I sew the front to the back and turn it inside out, it's going to be smaller. So you can see on this particular book, when I open it up, 
the flannel, the felt rather, is a little bit smaller than the book. Now before, and you can design your book however you want, but before I put it all together, I sew my little pocket. If you want a pocket for your uh, a pair of scissors, I sew that on before I put the book together. And I used a buttonhole stitch. So this is just a little pocket. I cut out a, a out of paper, um, a heart shape, the size I wanted, and then I cut the wool out with that as the pattern. And then I buttonholed around the outer edge so it created a pocket. Now once I do that, I am sewing right sides together and I am sewing all the way around leaving a little opening here so that I can turn this inside out. And it turns inside out because I only have the pellon on, on one side. It turns out inside out fairly easily. And uh, I've clipped the corners and then when I turn it inside out, I end up with a piece like this. You see how that is? And then you can whip stitch that little opening. You can hardly see it. Uh, whip stitch that little opening after you've pressed it. So this is the outside of my book. Then the inside of my book I fold, I have my two sheets here, and one that already has the little heart, the little heart um, stitch to it. And that's going to be my first page. For me, it's going to be my first page. It can be whatever page you want. But I fold it in half so that my pages are equal. And then I just press it with an iron so I know where the center is. And I press this with an iron so I know where the center is. And then the next step is to center that and then I just straight stitch it down. And I uh, back stitch on either side to give it some extra heft and then my book is done. Um, it's easy peasy. I did um, use a quilting weight thread to do the buttonhole stitch around my piece and also around the little scissor holder. But I'm telling you, these things are so fun. Look at that one. So today, I am going to be making the rest of these. Um, and so you too can make needle books. And you know, it's fun to make them out of whatever you want. You can do it with hexes, you can do it with pre-printed, um, uh, motifs uh, with fusible onto fabric, uh, embroidery, it's, uh, it's endless. And I do believe that whoever were to receive one would be so happy because we all want to keep track of a little pair of scissors and needles. And the scissors are the, you, they come in a pack of I don't have the box here, but they come in a pack of 18 little scissors in three different colors, and um, you just stick it in there. I mean, I just, I'm so tickled with myself. And what makes me especially happy is that this was a quilt project that was languishing. And 
I've come to the conclusion that there are some quilts that I am willing to push through, but with limited wall space and limited number of people I can give quilts to, that sometimes reinventing a project into something that is going to bring a smile to someone's face or make you happy because it is not a UFO anymore. It is done. And um, I'm especially happy. I'm so happy about that. So there it is, my step-by-step. -step. I hope that was clear enough for everyone to understand. The main thing I want you to know is that the needle book I didn't give you any sizes because it does not matter. It's whatever size you want it to be. The felt is just crafting felt that I bought at the craft store and I think it was like 59 cents a piece and I could get two pages of the book depending on what size your book is. Yeah, it's a really, really doable project um, for a gift exchange. Um, anything you want it to be. So on to the next thing. I, I told you I had ordered and received this, so today is my day to cut this quilt out. I got this at, at um, the Stitch and Post and Sisters. Um, I love this quilt. I could spend hours in the afternoon. I sit in my family room and look out at the feeder and um, watch the birds and there's so many birds now because uh, it's still I mean they still are predicting snow but it it is definitely changing it is definitely changing and so the birds are arriving things are are blooming and uh, although <laughs> my one tree <laughs> it bloomed and already dropped the blooms and there has not really been any substantial sun, but the rain and the cold just made it got out. Oh, yeah. But this is a Riley Blake um, design art journal by J. Recker Frisch. And um, so today I am cutting this quilt out and getting it ready for retreat next week. Um, I did... Uh, I've already cut out the Fat Quarter Shop, um, uh, the Nimes Quilt by um, French General Blue, and that's all ready to go. So I, I still have three quilts that I need to cut out. Um, the retreat uh, turns out it's a lot more days than I thought it was going to be, but who's complaining? Who's complaining about that? We will miss each other next week. Um, and um, But when I get back, I'll have lots to share. I, I had to buy this fabric for a pillowcase. And, I mean, it's, I mean, really, could I not? Iguana, jellyfish, koala, lion, moose. It's the alphabet. Yeah, it is so cute. I am going to make that for my youngest uh, grandson. And this is a Henry Alexander fabric collection. Oh my gosh, it's from 2013. And how could I have not seen this before? Wow. But I mean... <laughs> That's going to make an awesome pillowcase. Yes, because I am on the pillowcase kick, you know. We've got to make our pillowcases all year long. The other prepping that I am doing, well, that I did, I just have to pack the thread, is... I have to take a variety to uh, a quilt retreat. This is, you know, like six days, seven day quilt retreat. I mean, there's travel days in there, but um, make sure that I don't run out of stuff to do, for one thing, 
and then I don't get bored. <laughs> yeah, so I will have, if I get everything cut out, I have a Minecraft quilt to make, I have a, a bee quilt to make, I've got the French General quilt, and the Songbird quilt. So that's four quilts um, that I can piece. I um, have, I am taking Chester with me. This is a Kathy Schmitz. I mean, oh my gosh, Chester has to get done. Yeah. Because Ruth is, Ruth is waiting for Chester. Uh, the other embroidery project I'm going to take is the one Kathy sent me, Simply Sweet, 64 miniature hand embroidery designs. I cannot stress enough how much you're going to want this book. I cannot stop uh, looking at it. And embroidery is just, it, it is so not hard. And it is so relaxing. It's like painting with um, thread. And look at what she's done. I mean, she's made pin cushions with it. There's a full quilt where she's put all of the motifs in. This is 64 hand embroidered, miniature hand embroidered designs. She tells you what um, thread colors to use. It's a perfect book. And all of the designs are in here. All of the information on the stitches is in here. But the best part of this is that if you go to the front of this book, there's a QRS code where you can order a pre-printed uh, fabric panel on spoon flower. And um, so it comes like this where all the designs are already printed on it, you see. And um, so I decided to prep some of those. And what I did was I, um, she gives you different size circles to cut out, depending on what you want to do. And so I made a template, and just so I don't have to keep reinventing the wheel, I, the templates I made, the different size templates, I just uh, paper clipped them to the inside of the book. So the next time I want to do another one, I can do that. And then I put, as I do always, not everybody's cup of tea, but I have no problems with uh, my thread and needle going through, is I put Pellon SF 101 because I'm kind of lazy a little bit and sometimes I like to travel but I don't want it to show through the front and it also keeps the tension a little better you know when you pull you I don't know if you know so I prepped three of these circles to embroider and it has the SF 101 So I have embroidery to do. And then if you remember me sharing with you that in the um, patterns of, you know, the Woodland Forest Park Friends, there's always a test um, you get the sheet that is already inked and you get to print it onto your fabric with your iron. Oh, rather than tracing everything. I mean, sheer genius on her part. But she always gives you a little bit of a, uh, a design in the corner as a test before you actually do the animals. And the test pieces are so cute that I decided to prep those for embroidery too. So one of the test pieces was this watch. So I put SF101 on the back. Of the fabric and bigger one here a little bird so I have some embroidery to take with me I have um, 
four quilts, a pillowcase, and then I'm going to take my Urban Rose um, wool project with me. So I have some wool stitching. And I will take um, most likely two or three cross stitch projects with me. So I'll have this wide variety. And the embroidery always, see I have the embroidery traveling in my Yazzie bag. Look at that. This is a buttermilk basin wool project. I like to decorate my Yazzie bags. And see, I made this, I think I showed this to you already. I had a hexi square that I made into a little needle book. So I just took the six inch square and made a needle book out of it and put the little scissors in a pocket. And, and then I have pages for needles. Oh, and look at this. I created a little pocket for a needle threader in this one. I'm, I'm here to tell you, it makes you feel a little bit smug about yourself. <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel a little bit smug about yourself because, you know, I love everything I do. I don't want to feel guilty about everything I do, but when you finish something, it kind of, it, it is a pat on the back, so... Um, I've got all of those, um, a variety of things, and we are um, doing a shop hop on one day, and so I, I, I can't say I won't get something, but maybe with all of these projects coming with me, um, it'll make me think twice. I know that... Um, it's going to be extraordinary to be with my group of friends again. I um, Quilt retreats, stitching retreats are good for the soul. Especially after you've been at DMV. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you walk up to the desk and there's a sign that says you give them any attitude and you're out of there, that I had to go Okay, okay, no attitude. Hi, how are you? How's your day going? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for hanging in there. Oh, the night agent. It's so suspenseful. I could, I, I mean, I, I can't take it. Like some people binge it. I can't, I can't take it all. I couldn't binge it all. I have to do it in little bites at a time, but it is so worth it. And then I started reading a book um, that was recommended to me. And um, it is called, um, let me just, I want to get it right. It's the hottest book out there right now. And I... I'm just on chapter 11 because I started yesterday and it's pretty, it, it, I mean, it does grab you. It does grab you. Lessons in chemistry. I think they're going to make a movie out of it. But um, <laughs> it's good. I think on only I'm saying that only at chapter eleven that I would recommend um, reading that and um, it totally yeah okay movie books quilts embroidery the DMV <laughs> thank you for stopping by thank you so much. And Happy Easter to all of you who celebrate Easter. I hope you have um, some wonderful times with uh, family, if you're able to. And um, we'll see you down the road. Thank you.